Hello, and welcome to my discussion about the Remnant 2 stream that they just had with Admiral Baru. In the background, there is going to be Remnant 1 gameplay. Um, for the most part, in some instances, I'm going to talk about stuff, and they're gonna, it's going to pop up on the screen of Remnant 2. It's going to be mostly still images, somewhat. And if you care to watch the stream yourself, the link is going to be in the description. So let's get into it. First off, I want to say is armor. Armor is just a little bit more boring in Remnant 2 due to the fact that the armor is now just straight up the armor value you get, the resistances you get, and the weight. And that's it. So it's making it seem very not interesting so armor is now cosmetic basically you cosmetically make yourself look the way you want nothing else uh other wise if you want to be like the best person ever you're gonna grab the armor that gives you the best resistance against the damage type of this person or boss that you're gonna face and then you go but that's about it Really, I feel removing those isn't the best choice, in my opinion, but eh, I haven't tried it out, so it might be that good. Now, they replaced this with giving us four rings and one amulet. The amulets are supposed to be super strong and straight up damage dealing um, boosts. Meanwhile, the rings aren't damage boosts, but are basically slightly the way they said it was that it was for a kill you'll get something like crits or damage or move speed or something like that or you do a certain action and you get a benefit so and they're like we wanted to do that because they don't want us to have all four damage rings and it's like brah Unless it's like the elder healer and you have a three man group, everyone's doing damage. Everyone's picking the damage rings. I don't know what you're saying. It's either going to be the crits or the straight up free damage. You could do a movement speed build, he said, but I don't know how that really works. But speaking about movement speed build, apparently he hinted at the five archetypes that we know of that there's going to be more than five archetypes and that is the thing that is interesting that he hinted at now they could probably not come out with five which i am fairly sure on because the question was is there only going to be how many classes are going to be in the game and then he talks about archetypes now, their distinction between classes and archetypes might be different because classes could be the combination of two archetypes. Meanwhile, archetypes are there. We, there we're only going to get five. So if we're going to get five archetypes, we're not going to get, we're going to get like 10, 12 classes then because it's going to be the combination of stuff. I think I did the math before. It was like 24, but whatever. The thing is, is that there's a distinction there what the person probably meant is how many archetypes are we getting we're probably only going to get five they've only shown us five we're going to get five do not assume any more do not assume any less because they showed off five we're probably only going to get five classes could be meaning a whole different thing i've recently just been playing withering waves and they have words for stuff that just it's like why not just call them skills why not why are you calling them resonance cappuccino and resonance verdante and it's like that's just meaning ultimate and skill that's it it's ridiculous so naming using your words specifically i have been finding is very important so calling classes how many classes is you're gonna have we're not gonna get a straight answer 
saying archetypes, we might get a little bit more of a straight answer, but they're going to probably be type lip about it. So we probably are just going to get five and then the combinations of such. Next off is like, we got a little C of like guns and some of them like the LMG. The LMG is a gun I was like interested in and they pull, pull it out and it they introduce a new mechanic which is called overheating meaning the gun will overheat if you use it for too long and then you get staggered also there is other things like tremor is a, a status too where you are staggered also so these bosses have like interesting mechanics and also interesting things which they've added in they've again confirmed that there's going to be three players only, which if you are keeping up, you should know. And a lot of other things. There is, I shouldn't say there's a lot of other things. It's not really a lot of other things. It is just, we are shown stuff. An interesting note, the way they have randomized everything, is that we can either start on Yesha or we can start on another planet let's say like rom so instead of us starting on earth going to rom then possibly going to corthus then going to yesha instead we could start on any of those planets to begin with and then on that we can start with different um storylines they did he did get a little bit of a gave away we are probably still only gonna have two world bosses per world with an alternate kill, which means four bosses in a sense. Um, so he gave that a little bit away in the thing where we still only have like two campaigns per world, which is a little bit saddening considering the grandioseness that he's they're exaggerating of how different worlds will be. But what you gonna do? Can't really say much about that. Unless he let slip that the four were actually meant to be four different bosses, but I'm pretty sure he meant four bosses as in two with alternative kills counts as four. So that's a little bit of a sad thing. And that's basically it um other than some stuff of the gameplay um i've noticed two of the world bosses that they showed off the dog companion will be completely useless against will not be producing damage will not be doing anything other than buffing you due to the fact that they're flying bosses and they're both on yesha um the second boss there is a part of it where it is not floating and you may not want to had the dog out anyways due to the fact that the alternative kill of it in my theory is, has to work a certain way so we try to see if how the alternative kill was borrow did a good job by mentioning it at the very end um which is there's two bosses in a sense but there's one main boss and then there's like a side boss that you don't necessarily have to kill it looks like and the thing is is that you can kill the second the the off boss to a low enough health where the main boss will come over heal it and then loses it own, own health so first alternative kill thought was like oh if it does that then you can have it kill kill itself by healing the other boss wrong it stops itself at one hp so then the actual alternative kill would be probably on this boss be do not have it heal once if it doesn't heal the other boss once you get the alternative kill otherwise you kill it reason why i say it's more likely this for that world boss is due to the fact that remnant one's boss alternative kills are really easy to figure out there's only a few that are actually hard to figure out 
like the two butterflies the i forget what they're called <laughs> basically the butterfly boss of um Corthus. they you have to kill both of them at the same time or before the other one enrages for you to count as an alternative kill um otherwise killing one then killing the other after it enrages counts as the other way to kill it the trent Treant is you shoot out his leg, then you kill him. That counts as an alternative kill. Otherwise, you just shoot him normally and kill him without breaking his leg. Scorches break his tail. Very simple stuff. A lot of the bosses are like this. And then there's some, like, oh, I'm just going to call him Big Old Puppo <laughs> in, <laughs> in Yasha, um, where you have to shoot belts. And shoot bells in a certain order to give his alternative kill, which is not actually killing him. It's just pacifying him. And that is a way to beat him. Now, I've gone on this rant. Why? Because Remnant's boss alternative kills aren't that big of a deal. Or big differences. The thing I'm just theory crafting right now actually is the thing other than that there's really not much i'm a little bit upset that two of the bo bosses that they've shown really dog is completely useless there is also where they have made it so that scrap now automatically picks up so the universal currency just automatically picks up now no more smashing X or square or E or whatever you have as your button to pick up stuff up. So that's very nice. Second is that scrap and most of the currency that we're going to get is going to be from chess or lying about. So uh, the whole scrap thing is no longer just going to be random stuff in the world or seem like enemy drops it's mostly going to be from chess another thing is that heart relics i should say relics not heart runes they say heart runes too uh will now get runes and they have four slots so during this live stream we were first introduced to this rune system runes can go up to 30 and if you find a better rune, it'll just replace the rune that you have. There are about 20, I think he said, runes in the game. And they go up to level 30, and you can quit four, and they are passive effects on your character. So, And they get applied to your dragon heart. So you can get extra damage by like 1.2456 <laughs> sort of number percentage and it, it will increase and apparently the higher difficulties you go the higher your runes can go so a little incentive to go to higher levels to get that max 30 rune but also we get if we get the duplicates we will get runes sand or something like that a currency to allow ourselves to get increased chances of gaining a higher rate or gain more runes now what i understand that is likely for us to find these runes is to do explore just basically explore find the these secondary chests that he called exploration chests and go find those third um world tier levels compared to remnant one where we basically had where you want to try to keep it the lowest as possible so that you can have the easiest time through it this time will have you it automatically get increased by finding you finding runes you getting leveled up with your character class so that's how is that scaled and this goes back to the armor where Armors actually do not apply. Armor level does not apply to your level. Weapons, runes, and your class level are all what attribute to that. The world level. So, 
sounds like we're going to have to be leveling stuff up immediately, which I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Traits seem to have a max of... They said, like, level 80 is the max amount of traits you can have, and you can respect and all that so that you don't get all the traits. Which I'm not too big about. I like having my character to be all around her, but if they balanced it properly and not like Remnant is, where it very much seems that you need certain traits to succeed, and after that, it's like really you all the rest of the stuff is just beneficial stuff. Like there's the go to ones like health, stamina, uh, bark skin. There is damage ones like Kingslayer. Like, if there's not like ones that are so crucial like that, then yeah, I'm fine with that. Them limiting us at 80 trait points and gotta do what you get your build and you get to reroll pretty easily, they said. So we'll see how that goes. We also have Grey Health. If you do not know what Grey Health is, Grey Health is basically health that you have in reserve that you can heal over time after taking some damage. So you can get some of your health back. Just, it takes some ticks. They said that there's some builds that can work with this, so I'm interested in seeing what they have. Okay guys, this is a fair warning. I have done, I have said my piece about Remnant 2. In the live stream now this is just going to be a little rant on who they chose for it um i understand completely why they chose bar i completely understand he has a wider audience probably bigger than anyone else who's done remnant he has even a ring in Remnant, ring of the admiral and it is in the second game the thing is i don't think baru was the right choice due to the fact that Faru seemingly was unwilling to switch off of stuff in a way and his gameplay is a little bit was a little bit bad to be expected from somebody who's supposed to be so good at the game so I'm a little bit not happy with their choice. Also, his little humble brag at the very end of the stream, which really irked me, which was completely uncalled for, completely rude for him getting this massive preview and being able to play it with the game, where he basically said, like, oh, uh... Sorry guys for the quality and all that, but on my setup, I could do better. No freaking duh, you probably could do better. Asshat. I'm sorry, that, that's completely rude to the devs who brought you out here and let you get first hands on the game and actually get feel of it and you're probably, and you got a ring in the game. That is rude to say. You don't even mention that. You don't even mention your own setup that you could do better than they do can. Like, come on. But otherwise, I understand why they brought Baru. He has a ring in the game. He has the freaking audience and all that. He's gone big. But come on, Baru. Be better. <laughs> you don't mention that. Also, there's some questions I have that's like should have been brought up, like the dog fighting flying enemies and all that, like the flying bosses. There's two flying bosses that he fought, and the the dog is gonna be worthless against them. And so, did you incorporate that the dog is gonna be worthless, and that is part of his the handler's damage going out that it's just gonna be sitting there? I don't know. Mario also played with the dog like for five seconds and then he's like, I you feel my dog switched back to Gunslinger. And it's just like, okay, dude, you didn't even show off the handler at all. 
you barely touch it. You probably were asked to go show off the handler, basically. I don't know. It would have been fun to see the see handler in action, see gunslinger in action. He probably told that he couldn't be playing the other three archetypes, but come on, show off the handler some more. He showed off the gunslinger enough. Anyways, that's that little rant. I'm not really gonna mention much about his gameplay. It just it just feels bad that the devs got someone who has big influence that is kind of has a crappy attitude, and also seems like they like he hasn't even touched the game since he got his the ring in. So yeah. Anyways. Catch you guys all later. Sorry for that rant at the end there. Um, but catch you guys later. Bye-bye.